we have again our aquarium that is right now running within our the pod that is within our Kubernetes cluster. Hello there and thank you for joining me on day 6 of 100 days of Kubernetes, the challenge where I aim to learn something new related to Kubernetes each day throughout 100 days and I record my experience here on this channel. So if you're interested in that kind of content, subscribe. Anyway, today I'm going to be focusing on chapter three of this book here, right here, um, that focuses on how you can set up your first pod in your local Kubernetes cluster, what pods are, how they interact with Kubernetes, and just the practical part of things. The previous days I focused on the theoretical side. So if you're new to Kubernetes, check out my previous videos and let's get started. So like yesterday, I'm going to be following the documentation that I've already written down in my um, notes, in my 100 days of Kubernetes notes. So check them out. They are also linked below with all the commands and everything I'm going to be doing now. So you can also follow the written version if you prefer that versus the video version. First, I'm going to go ahead and clone this GitHub repository which is basically just a collection of different resources that this lovely person here <laughs> used in the book as well as future books and so on. So I'm going to be using some of the content that is within this repository. So let's go ahead and clone that. Now, once this is cloned, we're going to CD into that repository. And as you can see here, we are on the master branch. I have my microcades already running. Uh, if you're using some like mini cube microcades kind and so on, you don't necessarily want to have your cluster running consistently, but just when you're using it, when you're interacting with it, when you need it for whatever you're doing. Um, cool. So next we can set up and run a MongoDB database on our cluster. Okay, awesome. So in this case, it tells me that the command that I wanted to use here, the generator flag is no longer in use. So I can remove that. I will, we will no longer be using it. And the pod, the database pod has been created. Now I can go ahead and go kubectl get pods. And as I can see here, I have my DB pod running. And the DB pod is based on the MongoDB image which is a database image in this case is that we basically told um, Kubernetes take this image for MongoDB database and run it, um, which is a really imperative way of con take, having conversations with Kubernetes, let's say. <laughs> and imperative means that um, we basically tell it to do something and then it does it. We tell it to change something and it changes it. We tell it to do X, do Y. Um, so it doesn't react to conditions within the cluster and to our commands. Uh, instead, we want to have it declaratively in that way we tell Kubernetes, here's our definition of what we want to happen, what we want our pod to look like, go do it. And then Kubernetes with its controllers, services, etc., and everything that is within Kubernetes is responsible to make that happen. And that's the declarative way. And we usually we thriving towards using the declarative way instead of the imperative way. As I discussed in one of the previous videos on pods, uh, pods have different statuses. They can be uh, terminated, they can be failed, they can be running, they can be uh, pending. In this case, it's running. So now we want to delete pods. I want to delete this part and it's being deleted. Awesome. Now let's take a look inside of the pod and see what's actually, what's, what is it? How is it defined? <laughs> um, as you can see here, it uses the Kubernetes API version one and it's a of kind pod. Now those two here are necessary for each pod definition. Um, then we have some metadata. In this case, the metadata is purely for informational purposes. It doesn't change anything about our pod. And then um, here within the specs, it creates a container of name DB. We can probably change the, the name, I assume. And um, then we have the image Mongo and the version is the tag of which is refers in this case probably to the version is 3.3. Uh, we have a command and we have two arguments that are within an array that we can use. So we can use these two arguments from the array. Awesome. So this is, this is a basic pod definition. Now let's create this pod, right? Let's create that. 
let's create that now again so let's see people get pods okay the con container is being created in this case so it's probably in a pending state um, the pod is already there it's already in our cluster but the containers or one or all of the containers within the pod are not up and running yet so just checked again now our pod is running as indicated here in the status so when you say cubicle get pods it checks all of the pods within the default namespace so here we are checking within the default namespace um, you can divide your Kubernetes cluster into different namespaces and we'll get into that in one of the next days um, this is the default namespace there that we're using in this case we're also only using one pod so it makes sense to just use the default namespace if you're working in your production environment you wouldn't necessarily want to use the default namespace but a specific namespace related to your application so note that you should whenever you have you're done using a pod whenever you don't need a pod anymore you should go ahead and delete it we don't want to have unnecessary resources lying around that become difficult and annoying to manage later on so when it's deleting a pod it's basically kubernetes is telling the pod to gracefully stop please stop then it has uh, by default 30 seconds to stop if it did not stop after 30 seconds um, Kubernetes is just gonna kill the pod it's a bit radical in that sense <laughs> so usually you should never take just any random docker image or <laughs> repository that you don't 100% know what it's doing in this case I'm gonna be using <laughs> their docker image that does funny things specifically this one just to demonstrate how we can first run our docker container locally and then deploy the container on our Kubernetes cluster and then run it through our Kubernetes cluster. So if I go ahead now and I uh, this run this docker image, it's gonna first pull the docker image from in this case probably the docker hub um, or if it's a container image from another container registry I assume. Um, so let's fast forward once that's done and see the end result. Yeah, some ducks, beautiful little image, awesome. So now that we run this, this is a Docker container that's just running on Docker locally. Um, that's all, but we want to run it in our container so we can enjoy it for eternity now for as long as our container is running. Um, so let's, can I exit that? Yeah, let's exit that. <laughs> and awesome now we exit the image uh, but now we know which one it is so we can go ahead and uh, run it as a as a the container image and a pod in our Kubernetes cluster so here we can see that I modified our previous pod definition um, to use our the name container is fishy and we use the same image and with the command this command to specify that we want to use the aquarium image um, now let's get into the pod itself once we've done that it doesn't show anything it doesn't show our aquarium image why is that well we have to run our command again we have to make sure that it runs to see um, the fishies <laughs> and here once you run this we have again our aquarium that is right now running within our the pod that is within our Kubernetes cluster so let's have a look at how that on a theoretical level looks like. What happened, what we just did. So we have here, we have our Kubernetes definition with the pod, the API version of Kubernetes that we want to use and everything else that Kubernetes needs to know in order to know what kind of pod with which kind of containers and so on to create. So then we went with the kubectl. We told the Kubernetes API that runs within the master node within our cluster. Um, so basically our cluster, as you could, as you saw at the beginning, it has right now running one node and the node fulfills both the purpose of the worker node as well as on master node. So in this case, the kubectl, we talk with kubectl to our API server within the master node and the API server then talks with all the other components that are within the master node, within the worker nodes, um, to our node, to our worker node, and tells it, hey, you have to create this pod. So this is the node, and this is the pod. 
that is created. And within the pod, it tells it tells the node to run this specific container that we specified. Um, and that's basically all that's that's happening at a high level here. It's we have our definition, declarative definition on how our pod is supposed to look like and run on our cluster. We have all the components of Kubernetes um, that make it possible to run containers within pods within our node. And then here we have our node, our pod, and our container. And once this is running, we can then use kubectl to access it. And see our nice little fishies. This is a fish. Yay. Now with that done, I hope we have a better understanding of what pods are, how they work, how we can set them up, delete them, run them, interact with them within our cluster. I highly encourage you to check out the official Kubernetes documentation. Just play around with the different commands within your local cluster. Nothing really can go wrong. Just try it out, play with it, see what they do, how you can interact with your pods. It's going to be really useful for you in the future if you keep using Kubernetes. Also, if you want to be informed about upcoming videos, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be improving my videos each time, documenting the entire process for 100 days. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And with that being said, I hope you have a lovely day and to see you next time. Bye-bye.